Support for LA's comes from Gloria Kaufman Presents Dance at the Music Center with Pina Bausch's The Rite of Spring. Audiences will experience 34 dancers from 14 African countries February 8th through 11th at Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Tickets at musiccenter.org. Hi, this is Larry Mantle. Join me in our Film Week Critics March 3rd at the Orpheum Theater in downtown LA for our annual Film Week Academy Awards preview. Tickets available now at laus.com slash events. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, a big deadline tomorrow for renters in Los Angeles, especially renters behind on their rent since the pandemic. The first of two big storms arrives tonight. We have storm prep tips. And later, health centers at UC and Cal State campuses can provide abortion pills to students, but do students know that? We need to work harder if there is a student who needed the service and wasn't aware that they could access it through us and not have to pay for it. We have a report ahead from LA's senior health reporter, Jackie Fortier. It's Wednesday, January 31st. I'm Nick Roman. This is the LA Report from LA's 89.3. Renters in the city of Los Angeles face a big deadline tomorrow. If they don't pay up their pandemic-delayed back rent, they could face eviction. Details from LA's housing reporter David Wagner. Thursday marks the end of nearly four years of eviction protections for L.A. renters who fell behind due to COVID. A new study finds up to 93,000 households have debts coming due. Evictions have already risen above pre-pandemic levels. Barbara Schultz with the Legal Aid Foundation of L.A. worries they could climb even higher. Tenants will not be able to find representation and they will be displaced and potentially rendered homeless. Landlord groups say late rent has caused many owners to fall behind on mortgages. For LAist 89.3, I'm David Wagner. L.A. County is home to more unhoused veterans than anywhere else in the U.S. The Department of Veterans Affairs says it's making progress with housing those vets. But in a new interview with L.A. senior reporter Nick Gerda, the VA's John Kuhn is pushing back against calls to house 4,000 vets at the VA's West L.A. campus. Certainly the West L.A. campus is uh, an important asset and it's part of the solution. But our goal is to end homelessness. Our goal isn't to build as much housing as possible in West L.A. campus and essentially create a, a ghetto for veterans. The VA plans to build 1,200 apartments for vets at the West L.A. campus over the next six years. Advocates are suing in an effort to force the VA to build more. Los Angeles County's Men's Central Jail in downtown L.A. has been open since the 1960s. It's run down, fallen apart, described by criminal justice experts as uninhabitable. Now the county is looking at a five-year plan to close it down. Here's County Supervisor Lindsay Horvath. In many cases, it's not safe for inmates uh, to be housed there, nor our staff to work there, as has been stated many times. Closing Men's Central Jail is complex, and we have to do it thoughtfully, but we have to do it. The county says it would need to create 1,200 mental health treatment and supportive housing beds every year to make jail closure a reality. Right now, the county aims to shut down that jail in five years, but that's not fast enough for community activist groups who say the county talks and talks but doesn't move. Pretty soon, the first of two back-to-back storms will roll in. If you live on one of our many bluffs above the beach, well, you got work ahead. Making sure that their drainage systems on their property are functioning properly. And that's everything from gutters on your roof and downspouts to on-the-ground drainage. That's Joseph Street with the California Coastal Commission. He works on coastal erosion problems. Now, if you live in the foothills, especially on a steep street, Get your trash cans off the street. Don't park on the street and make sure the gutter drains are clear. So here is the storm schedule. Rain tonight, rain tomorrow, with the heaviest falling from 6 tomorrow morning until 3 tomorrow afternoon. Snow in the mountains and some light snow along the Grapevine and along Highway 14 to the Antelope Valley. Then this storm leaves. It'll be sunny on Saturday. And then storm number two arrives Saturday night into Sunday. 
When we come back, health centers at UC and Cal State campuses can provide abortion pills to students, but do students know that? Our Jackie Fortier, search for an answer. There's so much to navigate when renovating your home, and it can be overwhelming. Deciding on your next project, calculating costs, gathering estimates, and the most challenging part is finding a reliable and trustworthy contractor. Thankfully, Realm is here to help you get personalized, trusted guidance for all your home improvements. With Realm, you'll get an unbiased renovation advisor who will coach you through every step of your home renovation from start to finish. Your Realm advisor will match you with triple vetted contractors, help you with project planning, guide you through financing options, and provide data-driven guidance, local knowledge, and expertise. There's even a Realm app. It's so simple to use. See your home's current and potential value, prioritize projects according to budget, and track renovation costs. Realm is the smarter way to renovate your home. Schedule your free meeting with a Realm advisor today. Go to realmhome.com. Mention the LA report during your first advisor meeting for a special offer. Download the Realm app or visit realmhome.com and simplify your next home project. That's realmhome.com. In 2023, big movies came roaring back to the screens and audiences followed. From Oppenheimer to Barbie to Killers of the Flower Moon, movie lovers had plenty to celebrate. I'm Larry Mantle, host of Film Week, inviting you to our annual Academy Awards preview. I'll break down all the big races with our Film Week critics live on stage. Join us March 3rd at the historic Orpheum Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Tickets at las.com slash events. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. The health centers at the University of California and the California State University can provide students with abortion medication. But do students know those pills are available right there on campus? Well, L.A. has checked and found few UC or CSU health centers tell students the medication is available. L.A.'s senior health reporter Jackie Fortier has the story of one student who did not know. When Deanna Gomez found out she was pregnant last fall, the timing couldn't have been worse. She worked 60 hours a week at two jobs while taking a full class load at Cal State San Bernardino. She couldn't provide for a child. I grew up poor. I don't want that for my children, like, ever. She wanted a medication abortion where she would take one pill at the doctor's office and another pill a day later to induce cramping and bleeding and empty her uterus. Gomez didn't bother to go to the university health clinic, thinking it was only for basic health needs. Because that's exactly how it was explained to me. She ended up driving more than 300 miles to three different medical offices around Southern California, spending hundreds of dollars. She had no idea she was entitled to a free medication abortion right on campus. If I had known that, I would have taken advantage of it. I think emotionally it would have taken a lot of stress off of me because I would have been on campus. I spent a lot of time driving around after work, switching schedules, putting my homework on the back burner. A year after California became the first state to require all of its public universities to provide the abortion pill to students, basic information on where or how students can obtain those pills is lacking and often non-existent. To afford the hundreds of dollars in medical care and gasoline, Gomez worked overtime shifts at her two jobs and missed a full month of classes, jeopardizing her planned December graduation date. So everything that you said was the reason and the impetus for the bill, that students had to miss class, that it was too costly, they had to go to several locations. Connie Leva is a former state senator who authored the bill. Women who have a child while in college are less likely to graduate than those that do not, according to Education Department data. Leva said she was focused on that and neglected a requirement to tell students. I don't know that we ever uh, talked about including something advertising, basically, that you could get a medicated abortion on campus. So it definitely wasn't ever taken out of the bill. For once, funding isn't an issue. Each campus has $200,000 at their disposal to provide medication abortions, and they are allowed to spend some of that money on outreach. You know, I would love to see someone who's still in the legislature take that up and make it a requirement that the schools have to provide the information so that the students know. At Cal State San Bernardino, medication abortion is only mentioned in small writing on a poster in a patient room at the health center. A student wouldn't see it until they were waiting for a doctor or nurse. 
Clinic Director Beth Jaworski. We need to work harder if there is a student who needed the service and wasn't aware that they could access it through us and not have to pay for it. But it's one student. We haven't been providing the service very long. It's been just about a year now. After our interview, medication abortion was added to the clinic's website. But Gomez wants more, including posters, emails, and Instagram posts directed at both faculty and students. She says universities should be as vocal about abortion pills as they are about sporting events. You want to market the football games, you want to market volleyball games. You know, why is that important and abortions are not? Gomez did graduate from Cal State San Bernardino, becoming the first person in her family to earn a bachelor's degree. But she's angry at her alma mater. She wants to know why universities keep abortion pills a secret when they could help students like her. For LAist 89.3, I'm Jackie Fortier. Tomorrow, LAist higher education correspondent Adolfo Guzman Lopez looks at what students and faculty on campuses are doing to fill the information gap. And we have a full report online at LAist.com. Thanks for listening to the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the L.A. Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujie. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, our director of content development. Our engineer today, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. A young correctional officer. He said it was the most dangerous prison in California. Forced to make a choice. Fulfill his oath or back his fellow officers. Recognize the badge of my office. I'm Suki Lewis. From KQED Podcasts comes On Our Watch Season 2, New Folsom. A story about who gets hurt when the system that promises to keep us safe is bent on protecting itself. Find it wherever you listen to podcasts.